at the Thor Love and Thunder premiere in Los Angeles, there was a moment when s- someone had a soda pop in a in a bottle and it fell and it rolled all the way straight to my aisle and it exploded. Kids, get to popcorn now. Let me tell you the story of the space viking, Thor Odinson. He was no ordinary man. He was a god. Yourself and Natalie Portman both play pretty epic female roles in Thor Love and Thunder. What is your favourite thing about playing such a strong female superhero? And how did you decide when filming what qualities a strong super a, a strong female superhero would have? I've always thought, I mean, obviously there's like a certain amount of strength and we both got, you know, as big and buff as we could get for the, the movie. So there's a kind of physical strength to bring to the character. And, and 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 the strength and agility that they have fighting. But I've always thought in terms of any character, particularly female characters, when people say strong, I've always thought strong should mean um, that they're well-defined, that they're not painted in broad strokes, that they have real definition. Um, and so that they resemble the women that we are, the women that we know. So that's the thing that I find exciting about these two superheroes uh, that happen to be women is that they ha- they they have real humanity that they have stuff going on that they have self doubt that they have um, yeah that they have edges I think that's the thing that makes them the strongest and those are kind of the only characters I really want to play so I feel really lucky that I get to play it and get to watch my good friend and also such a tremendous actor um, do it with me in Natalie he went from dead bod to god bod. And after all that, he reclaimed his title as the one and only Thor. Oh, spoke too soon. Jane? So I was wondering, at Cineworld, we will be playing Thor Love and Thunder in 4DX cinema. Have you ever experienced a 4DX cinema before? I don't think I have. What, What is it like? So it's where the seats move in time with the action on screen and there's like wind and water and everything going on. Okay, this is so funny that you're saying this. I have not experienced this. I want to come. But at the Thor Love and Thunder premiere in Los Angeles, there was a moment when someone had a soda pop in in a bottle and it fell and it rolled all the way straight to my aisle and it exploded and it exploded during a moment of a fight scene and my dad and I got confused and the whole row thought that suddenly it was like a 4x cinema we were like we thought it was interactive but it was just coke spilling in our faces (laughs) but then we were talking about how cool it would be to actually see the movie in in this thing so I would love that that's so cool the old ex-girlfriend What's it been like? Three, four years? <laughs> Eight years, seven months, and six days. Give or take. Am I uh, sensing feelings? <laughs> well, you're right. Is there a scene you think would work particularly well in Thor: Love and Thunder in a 4DX cinema? <laughs> does that include smells? Can you do? You can do. Smells? It does have. Yeah, it has scent and it has snow and bubbles and wind and water. Well, I'd love to smell what New Asgard smells like when you enter new Asgard um that would be cool um and I think it would the the goats have a very particular yell and sound that they make when we land so I think getting that in the 4d experience you know when the goat boat lands and you're shaking and the and and also if there's a way to like kind of make the sonic experience of the goats just be even louder than they already exist in the film i think that could be really fun plus i'm curious what the goats smell like i mean i they look beautiful and well bathed, so i don't think they're smelly but maybe there's a little grassy notes of grass when they're around which could be nice i do think the goat scenes would be absolutely epic in 4 <laughs> um with that in mind, actually, I hear that you do love goats and they play a very substantial role in this film. So were you excited when you heard that they would feature? Hugely. I felt uh, seen. There's a lot of uh, conversation about representation, but this is the kind of representation that I personally have been looking for. I know people think I advocate oh. for a certain a, a kind of representation, but it's really goat representation that, <laughs> that's actually the most important to me. Um, so this is a big, this is a big moment for me. <laughs> For me. <laughs> the only ones who gods care about is themselves. So this is 
my vow. All gods will die. So last quick question before we wrap up. Why do you think audiences should see Thor Love and Thunder on the big screen? <laughs> well, first of all, I think audiences should try to see anything they can on a big screen when it makes sense, just because I think there's something about the communal experience of, of coming together in, in the cinema that really is important. And also not for nothing. I think we live in times where like the future of cinema, you know, it's it's important to continue to support it. Obviously, these films they travel globally, and the, you know, and there's so many cool cinematic experiences like 4X. You know, you get to see them in in big and immersive ways, and you don't get to do that with every film. So I think for this kind of film, it really makes sense to see it in cinemas. And then I think you know the film is really about love and all its forms. And I think we're living in increasingly you know. Um, in times where it's increasingly important to to really engage with how powerful love can be and that it is really transformative. And I know that sounds really cheesy, but it's just true. So I don't know how else to, <laughs> to say it and sound cool. But I absolutely love that answer. Thank you so much. I think we have to wrap up now, but thank you and have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you so much. I just want to say that was very, very impressive what you did back there. She's my first bad guy. You never forget your first. You are not like the other gods of kill. Because I have something worth fighting for. Let's see who you are. I take off your disguise and flick. Oh, you flick too hard, damn it! Shall we help him? I mean, eventually, grape. <laughs>